and wait to be called on. We'll start with Grant Ramey. Rick, that seven minute stretch there to close the first half, was that as good as you've seen from Dalton? Obviously he's played pretty well, but to score twenty out of twenty two to end the half. Yeah, Grant, that was pretty impressive. And uh, you know, I thought his teammates started feeling it too, that he knew that he was in a little bit of obviously a good rhythm, a good place and him trying to really get him the ball and uh, know that, you know, that when he gets that look that he was going to go with it. And But uh, obviously we talked about it that last four minutes about really, uh, you know, we didn't close the half at Georgia very well and uh, better job. One reason we didn't close it well at Georgia was we weren't very good offensively, which led to some uh, – not so good defensive possessions, but that was a, a good stretch for him, but it's also a good stretch for our team. Mike? Yeah, Rick, what did you like about what you got from JP? I mean, obviously, it seemed like he went in because of fouls in the first half, but it seemed like he came back in the second half and, and really held his own. I thought he looked like he belonged tonight, Mike. I, I thought his confidence looked good, uh, and I think that happens when you're doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, he was really trying to work it getting into his coverage uh, with the ball screens and getting in a stance. Um, and I think that when it goes back to preparation, you know, doing your work, knowing that when you're called on, you're going to be ready. And and uh, we've talked about what we need from him. And if he'll keep building, he can help us every game. And he, would, he will play every game. He'll come back, practice well, you know, Thursday, Friday, get ready for the game Saturday. And uh, he gives us another – Big body and a guy that uh, we think we. I'm telling you, the guy can score the basketball and uh, got good hands. And but I thought today his confidence. I thought he looked good. I thought he looked like he truly belonged out there. But I will go back. It was his preparation, getting ready for the game. Wes. Yeah, Rick, in, in terms of, you know, scoring 85 points in a game where Zakai, I think, takes two shots from the field out there in 34 minutes, is that surprised you at all? Or is that just sort of just say what the number of options that are on this team and when he's facilitating things? No, I'm not surprised because Zakai is all about winning, you know, and uh, and I think there, there are teams that probably come into the game thinking we want to make Zakai do everything. And I think that what you said, there are more than just one option, and we still haven't got everybody playing at the level that we know we've seen them play at some point in time. It's a matter of continuing to put it together. But Sakai is all about – this team's about winning. Santi, Josiah, Jemai, these older guys, they want, they want a lot of it. They want to win, and they want to, they want to play well. There's no doubt about it. They, they want to play well. But uh, I, don't think, I don't think any of them uh, – to be honest with you, I was oblivious about – uh, Dalton getting close to 40 points, but they were trying to get it for him. And uh, I actually looked at Coach. He's muted now. But but but, but his teammates were wanting to get it for him. Ben? Rick, what'd you think of what you got from Jones tonight and, and what allowed him to be successful and build off of those last five minutes at Georgia? Well, I think anytime Jonas make is aggressive, I think that's the key word when he's aggressive and locked in. Again, he, he's a major factor and again another double double by him and Toe Bay. And they they've got a really good front line, you know. They've got four post players that they rely on and do a really good job. They're a really good offensive rebounding team and and uh, they still have some success with that tonight, but Jonas, uh, you know, I think he, I think obviously guys are starting to understand each other where they need to the ball, when they need to get it. And, uh, and Jonas, uh, like he hit a, we came out and started the second half and ran a little play to get him a little mid range jumper. Again, it was really great execution. Santi did his job to go get him open. And, uh, but it's guys looking out for each other, you know, trying to help each other. Uh, be successful and and uh, and if they play together, uh, I think they know they can and score points. Rob, coach, going back to that North Carolina game, I remember the post game. You talking about Jonas and talking about the fact that you know, hey, we're going to have an inside game. We're going to have a presence in there. How much better is your team now? You know, six eight weeks later, because of the steps that Jonas has has been able to take. 
Well, not only him, Rob, but you go back a couple of weeks ago, you know, Tobey was playing really well and, uh, you know, scoring the ball for us. And, and again, uh, you know, you can throw Dalton in and we kind of give him the ball for block and, and do some things. But Jonas, you know, I sat down with him maybe now two weeks ago and showed him all the close players that we played against and showed his numbers against them and some other players in the country. I said, Jonas, I'm telling you, man, you're as good you're as good as these guys for certain. It may be better, but it's consistency and you gotta want to put these numbers up, man. But to do that, you're gonna have to really work hard yourself to want the ball where you want want it and get aggressive. And uh he, he's done that. Uh other than he, you know, he didn't have a great night uh defensively at Mississippi State, but he's been a his length around the basket is it's effective in a lot of ways, not only defensively, but offensively as well. Ryan, how would you assess y'all's defensive performance tonight? Well, as you know, they're an outstanding offensive team. They, they put one of the fastest playing teams in the country. Uh, you know, transition defense was good for the most part. Uh, they got out and transitioned some off of our turnovers, uh, but uh, trying to keep them from those uh, no pass paint touches or, you know, one pass threes. Uh, obviously trying to work hard on their ball screens, things like that, because they're, they're an, as you know, a very explosive offensive team. But uh, I thought overall defensively uh, we were good. I, I started the second half not so good on our coverage to start the half. But uh, overall, I mean, you hold a team to 29%. Uh, you're doing a good job. David. Rick, you touched on uh, – you were touching on all the players when you were asked about Zakai. I'm just kind of curious when when uh, Dalton goes off on a night like tonight, how how are San Santi and uh, Josiah handling nights where they may only get like three or four shots because obviously they haven't been used to that throughout a lot of their careers. How have they kind of handled this when, when – I, Dalton... I would tell you this. Those two guys are two of the most unselfish people I've ever been around in my life. They don't care. They, they, they're happy for him. Uh, they, they get it. And uh, believe me, they've embraced him because they, they want to win. And there's going to be nights where, as you know, they can go off too. I mean, you go back a couple of weeks ago, Josiah has been our most consistent player all year, including Dalton. I mean, Josiah was the one. And uh, I just think once we get everybody going and we, we've got an unselfish team, we really do. The young guys are, understand and I think and hope they learn from you what that question would think a lot of teams like players might be upset with that but I can assure you that Santi and Joe they, they they're not because uh they want him to do it you know because they want to win I mean they played they they're going to go out as some of the winningest players here at, at Tennessee and uh but they again they are so unselfish and uh but, but defensively I think they work so hard to try to help Dalton. I mean, because they they know that they want him on the court, but they also know late games you got to be able to do it on both ends. And uh, and you go back, you know, I think a little bit of where Josiah has struggled lately is I think I think he played too many minutes, and that's my fault. And I can say the same with Santi, because honestly, uh, those older guys they're my comfort blanket, you know, because I know they're going to guard. And uh, but the job that those guys do coaching these guys that are new to this is phenomenal. But uh, and I'm just telling you, they're so unselfish. Uh, and uh, believe me, they're happy for them. And but most of all, they're happy that we're winning. Last one's from Reese. Coach, uh, Jonas seemed to have that mid-range game going today. How have you seen his mid-range jumper develop in his time here at Tennessee? Well, he, he does shoot the ball well. He's got a really he's got soft hands, and when he gets his feet set, I mean, Jonas is one of those guys that we think uh, when he gets a good look, is going to go in. And uh, but uh, it, it all goes back again for work. He's been really focused in practice, and uh, I'll go back. To every one of these guys, it's all about consistency. We're just getting started in the conference race here, and a lot of basketball left. But uh, it's. Uh, it goes back preparation. You know, your what you put into this game is what you're going to get out of it. And 
I think consistently that's what uh, that's what uh, the guys that, again they play well. You don't let up. You don't allow complacency to become a part of your mindset. Again, I always say you got to want more. There's always room for growth, and it's about getting better. And I think that Jonas has embraced that in a lot of different areas, not just, you know, uh, we want him to score, obviously, some with his back to the basket, but we also like his little face-up, short, uh, mid-range game. All right, Coach, thank you. I just want to go on record. And say that in my ninth year at Tennessee, first of all, I want to thank all the people that helped bring this together for us today. But I want to go on record saying this is the best looking press room I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, I've never I've got people in here and they look good, but I just want you guys to know that. All right. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> well, it's probably true. Well,